Now my control panel is set up such that I can actually pivot it so that I could work from either side of the engine and control it or work from the back side, you know, like whichever I felt safer from or whatever I was doing, that sort of a thing. Now, one thing that's not on here that I intended to uh, put on here was a lawnmower throttle control that I'd bolt to either side of this uh, unit here and it would just have a mechanical linkage to the carburetor. Uh, that's not on here. I haven't done it yet. Uh, you know, it's one of those things for future uh, reference. This box here is just something I bent up out of some scrap metal I had lying around. You could probably find anything you wanted or for that matter just mount these gauges to a plate and work accordingly. Now I have it set up such that uh, I have an ignition switch uh, to control main power and to actually start the engine and various switches that control things like I can control power to the uh, coil, fan, or you know, for some odd reason I decided to put one in for the uh, dash lights. As well, I don't have a switch in here, but if you uh, had an electric fuel pump, uh, it could be controlled here. Uh, these are just switches I picked up from uh, a local uh, automotive store. Uh, same goes for these fuse uh, blocks. I think I pulled them out of a uh, uh, out of a small fuse panel for uh, an RV or something like that, but I think I, the, you know, that's the sort of thing you could probably find there at any automotive store. These gauges are nothing special. I've got a mechanical uh, oil pressure gauge, uh, electric tack. Uh, I've got a mechanical water temp gauge. I decided to put a uh, a voltmeter on here in case I was running an engine on here for an extended amount of time so I could make sure that uh, the battery didn't completely you know, die if I never hooked up the uh, alternator. Uh, it also would be a good diagnostic tool for the situation where you've got low battery voltage and you've got a no start condition. You know, like it would be something that would certainly eliminate that need. I've also got an ammeter here and the only reason I have an ammeter here is the gauge, gauges that I picked up I picked up a uh, set from Walmart. I think the whole set, including the tack, cost me somewhere around 40 or 50 bucks. Um, I just had it, so I put it in there. No real re reason to have the ammeter in there, unless you've got a one-wire alternator and you're gonna, you know, test how it's working on the engine. But, you know, in reality, you know, it's probably not the sort of thing you need. Now this is just supported with one-inch tubing, bolted to the uh, engine. Uh, one thing I should mention, uh, now that I think about it, this expanded metal cover here is just wedged in here. It's not bolted in here. The idea being is that I could just pull it out, undo the various bolts for the uh, engine and then lift the engine out of the test stand with no fuss, no muss. Okay, so just uh, we'll go over the uh, um, various uh, structure for the support of the radiator here. Now it's not particularly strong. This is just three quarter inch uh, square tubing here that comes over to this uh, piece of I think it's three sixteenths plate with a one inch tube uh, welded onto it and that in turn is attached to the two inch tube with a two inch square U-bolt. Uh, for the most part you know it's probably not particularly strong but it should keep the radiator out of the fan uh, it's adjustable as you can see there so that uh, if you had let's say for example a long water pump or a long uh, fan as opposed to a short one then it would make a difference there now here's a front view of the uh, rad support even though I had a uh, engine fan on here I also elected to put an electric fan in uh, that's nothing special that's just one I pulled out of a 88 Buick but uh, anything would do uh, well. Now granted, that one was designed as a puller fan. I just reversed the polarity and I'm using it as a pusher fan. May not be uh, that effective, but it should, you know, in combination with the mechanical fan, should be effective. Once again, the entire frame of this is a one inch square tubing. Uh, this is just pi in, uh, pipe insulation here to keep the uh, rad from rattling against it as well. I used pipe insulation on the bottom here to keep the uh, radiator from rattling uh, against the top of it as well as at the top with these 
clamps I'm using as hold downs. Nothing critical here. I don't think there's any dimensions that you need to give. Uh, that radiator is a two core radiator from a late model van of some kind. Uh, no idea what it is. You know, I would just use whatever you've got lying around. Okay, so there you have it. That's just really a guideline for how I built my uh, engine test stand. Um, if you hear me huffing and puffing between some of these uh, things there, that's because I've been horsing this thing around the shop, and it is pretty heavy. But I imagine it would move easily enough if you had a real workshop with a real concrete floor. Um, now, I will say something cautionary. And that is that I have never actually run an engine on this stand. This is the first engine I put on the stand, and this engine has not been run because, well, it seems to be missing a carburetor. Now, that said, uh, when I get through with uh, regasketing this uh, 65 diesel that's sitting here, it will be going on this stand. I'll run it in just for a little bit of fun, and uh, we'll see how well it works for me there. Apart from that, I think I've covered everything that's uh, worth mentioning about it. I'll just do a little quick uh, once around on this unit here. Um, none of the components I've used with this unit, I believe, are particularly unique. Like I said, the gauges came from uh, Walmart. The steel was, you know, just from a local steel supplier. Expanded metal, I think, was even from Home Depot. Uh, Battery cables were brand new from uh, from Napa, I think, and uh, casters were just something I had lying around that probably any hardware store would have. Uh, apart from that, you know, like some of the items were salvaged, like the radiator was salvaged, the fan was salvaged. Yeah, you can probably see that it probably wouldn't be that effective a fan because there's a bit of a gap between here and the radiator, but can always correct that at some later time by remaking my uh, my brackets there. Matter of fact, if I put them on the other side of the tubing, they would probably work quite well. In any case, I could always fabricate a shroud as well. Now that said, uh, I suppose if you have any questions about the stand, uh, you could post them in the comments section of the uh, YouTube video here. Uh, have fun.